India is a very big country with a population of 1.324 billion as of 2016. It's the second highest populated country in the world. Even with the commotion of a big city like Mumbai, it's easy to see the vast disparity between the classes. And to cater to such a large population, we create jobs. Dignity of labor is the concept that all types of jobs are respected equally and no occupation is considered inferior or superior. The first form of labor is intellectual labor, which requires the use of the brain rather than the hand. It includes doctors, engineers, teachers, lawyers, etc. Manual labor, on the other hand, comprising of farmers, cleaners, construction workers, etc., compels the use of physical force. These are the jobs commonly perceived as lesser, unskilled, and unimportant. Those who work in these sectors are treated poorly, as if they're untouchable and unclean. Dignity of labor encourages appreciation and respect towards any form of work done, no matter the profession. It is not a matter of what is done, but how it's done. We began our research by conducting surveys for students to support the information we got through secondary research. We decided to take this further by interviewing staff members of our school, with a total of 26 members of our support staff being interviewed. We asked them questions about their work hours, benefits, and how they felt their profession was perceived. The response we got brought us to the conclusion that they didn't necessarily feel respected in their jobs. Some of their responses were not very forthright, and we thought that might be due to the lack of job security. We also interviewed our teachers to know about their perspectives and experiences with dignity of labor. We noticed that the teachers who worked with the arts felt more negatively impacted than those who worked with STEM subjects. Another thing we noticed was that our expatriate teachers felt less personally affected by dignity of labor, but noticed it in our school. Through our research, we found that local residents and those who have been raised in India seem to be contributing to this problem. We are placed with the presence of so many different jobs, where domestic helpers and cleaners do so much of our work. Children are still raised with the mentality of work hard so you don't end up like the countless people that make our lives easier, rather than being told to appreciate their hard work. We hypothesized that this could stem from the caste system and its manifestations in today's society. Needless to say, the effect of such long-standing stereotypes and prejudices was not something we would be able to abolish through a one-month-long group project. But we could provide a new narrative for those unaffected by these norms. We decided to start by focusing on our school where we see this issue on a daily basis. The mindset of the students and parents was incredibly biased against our support staff. The most prominent problem faced was the lack of appreciation towards the cleaners, lift ladies, drivers, and helpers. The lack of recognition given to them drove us to start a campaign to increase the respect for the support staff at OI. We sought permission from the board to publicize our initiative on our school's daily bulletin so that our entire student body could see it. Furthermore, we advertised by creating, designing, and putting up several posters in our school as well as in subject classes. A few of the posters focused on ideas such as respect and gratefulness, but one in particular was significantly more impactful. We put up posters in the elevators of the ladies who go unnoticed far too often. Encouraging that we learn their names rather than calling them Didi and treat them as individuals. This received a lot of support and got the attention of the staff at our school. In a perfect world, we wouldn't need dignity of labor. So, to take our action further, we tried to think of how we could work to achieve that at a personal level. In order to encourage behavior that creates a respectful environment for people of all professions, we decided to target the root of the problem. Our target audience children. The young, impressionable minds that could do away with the need for dignity of labor and create an environment that fosters dignity for people of all professions. By making a children's book with ideas such as valuing and respecting people of all professions boiled down to the simplest principles of respect and value between farm animals, we allow the children to understand why that's something that they must do and hopefully they would be able to apply that to situations in their lives. After we planned the story, one of our group members created a draft and another illustrated the entire book. We contacted the teachers from the early years and organized readings with their students. These readings ended with the idea that all work deserves equal respect. In order to spread our message on a larger scale, we shared our book with three schools in Delhi so that it could be shared with more of our target audience for interaction with children. The book was read up to the children from kindergarten all the way up to the second grade. Our book received a lot of positive feedback from these schools. 
Furthermore, we reached out to one of our municipal corporations in hopes that they would realize how big this problem actually is and act upon it. The outcome of our project was to spread the message that all jobs are equal and that what they're doing isn't the only thing that matters, but also how and why. Dignity of labor is a very nuanced issue and must be treated similarly to any kind of discrimination. So we must teach children to recognize their privilege, to think rather than assume, and to grow to create an environment that fosters respect for people of all professions.